Hello viewers, I'm SB, and welcome back to the episode of Caves of Cud that almost wasn't. I thought very seriously about ending the series uh, with, with that last episode, or rather really just releasing like a short little thing today saying, hey, we're going to wrap it for right now. Um, you know, the one point I release is coming up sometime. I don't know exactly when. Uh, it, it says, I, th I believe it still says on their website that they plan to go 1.0 sometime in 2020. That is, and maybe that'll still happen, but I don't know. Uh, and and we're going to come back when that when that happens. My plan is to come back, right? Because the, I'm certainly not done with Caves of Cud. I, I love Caves of Cud very much. I'm having a great time. But I thought maybe it would be a good idea to have some surprises left, right? To not see absolutely everything before we get there. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to go I'm going to go walk the dog and I'm going to think about exactly what I'll say. And then when I come back, when I get back from the walk, we'll, we'll uh, put out a short video that's just like, hey, so to be continued. But then, on the walk, I thought about literally nothing but playing more Caves of Cut. Like, to the point where I had to stop the podcast I was listening to and rewind it several minutes because I realized I hadn't been paying any attention because I was thinking so much about what I would do with a new character. So, stopping the series, trying to maintain some surprise, stupid idea, throwing it out. What we're going to do instead is we're going to go over to the beta branch where things are new and strange, even newer and stranger than the new and strange things we've already seen here. Um, and I don't really know what to expect from that. But before we do that, we gotta send Mithra off properly, right? Mithra has been an incredible, uh, an incredible traveling companion for us all. We've seen so many things together. We've done so many things together. Mithra deserves a proper heroic end. So, to that end, you can see here, uh, we are now famished. I've gotten us famished and brought us back to Leech Valley. The antifungal cure that we used yesterday did not work, and you might be wondering why. SB, did you screw this up? I, I'm ashamed to report, yeah, I, I, I did the thing. I did the thing I always do, right? Uh, it turns out that I can read, but I cannot read all of the words. Uh, what we needed to eat to stimulate our digestive system prior to applying the, the uh, solution was not a leech corpse, but a bloated leech corpse, which is not a leech corpse that is bloated, but instead the corpse of a totally different creature that is called a bloated leech. Oops, but here we are, and now we can do that thing, so let's just jam this and not jam this in our gullet and not think uh, real hard about that. I feel a little queasy. Yeah, I bet. I just bet, my dude. All right, let's get some of that. We still have some of the mixture, right? If I just ate a if I just ate a whole raw bloated leech corpse for nothing, okay, good. Uh, so let's pour some of this into the spray bottle, and then go up to the spray bottle and spray my stupid face with the gel, and we'll see if this works. Okay, apply to, and again, there's no way to know which fungal infection is which, we're just going to spray them both. Aha! The infected crust of skin loosens and breaks away. Hey, excellent. So actually, we can go... Sorry, we can go and have a look. That was the face one. Okay. Well, we're not going to... Uh, we're not going to spray the other one off because I like it. I like the extra point of armor and we don't need the arm slot. Okay, so we have our cool bonnet on again and uh, I have shown that I am now... I'm capable of reading basic reading tasks the second time through. All right, so that's not that's not the heroic send off. Obviously, that's just a thing that I felt we had to do. A, a an error on my part that needed correction. Here's what we're gonna do. We've been building up Mister's whole life toward that phase cannon, right? We have to have 29 intelligence to take the amount uh, uh, to take the level of tinkering that is required to build that thing. 29 intelligence is four levels away. Uh, you can see we have 35,000 XP from our current level to the next one. So four levels, we might reasonably extrapolate, is going to be, I don't know, maybe 150,000 XP. And without the main quest line to provide those big boosts anymore, uh, that seems like it would be a very long time of just grinding and, like, finding out about historic sites and then figuring out how to get to them, which is going to be worth, like, 1,500 XP each time we do it. So we're going to cheat. They put the stuff in the game so we can cheat, and we're going to cheat. There is a keybind that you can enable that just gives you XP. 
Uh, it's a shame that it gives a hundred. Uh, it's a shame that it gives a thousand, because obviously I'm gonna have to press it a whole bunch of times. Um, enabling the wish command lets you enabling wish lets you type stuff in, and probably I could have gone and figured out what the appropriate wish would be to just like set my strength or set my intelligence to something. But this is the clumsy way, and this is the way we're gonna do it. Uh, what's a button I'm not gonna accidentally press? OEM six. That's really that's that's supposed to be close bracket. Okay, that's fine. I trust him. That's probably what that is. I would like to change, save my changes. Thank you. Uh, okay. Six... Did that... Was that the right number? That didn't seem like the right number. Uh, I have 1,300 skill points remaining. Okay, it went further than I intended. It got. It took us all the way up to level 34 with a single press. Well, whatever. It got us to uh, it got us to the twenty nine intelligence we were looking for. Uh, so let's grab Tinker three. Okay, an Eater's Nectar Injector, an ergonomic chair, or a is this is this a real? Are you, okay, give me that Eater's Nectar Injector. What on earth could that possibly be? Uh, show me that thing I just. Is it not on here? They're in alphabetical order, but it's not It's not there. Did I learn a thing you can't actually learn, or... Hmm. I, who knows? Who knows what just happened? I definitely don't have access to this thing. It's not a mod, is it? It can't be. It sure doesn't look like it. Okay. Did we ever get microcontrollers? We didn't. I think we saw something that could be disassembled in microcontroller. Oh, the the um, the uh, sphere of infinite of negative weight. I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. Oh, right. Sorry. We don't know the recipe yet because it doesn't teach you the recipe. It gives you a disc. And you can see I found some books while we were uh, while I was waiting to get famished. We'll look at those, I guess, in a moment here. Let's learn this because I'm very curious about that, and then also. This thing, you learn to build phase cannon. What an exciting phrase. Okay, what is this? You gain one attribute point. It's made out of scrap metal and photonics and an R-splice seed. Still, still we are seeing wild new things, even in the build that we've been playing with for 50 hours. Alright, but this, this right here, it would have been just, con just hugely wrong to end Mithter's life without getting our hands on a phase cannon. It has 16 penetration and a 4d12 damage die. That's very exciting. Of course I tinker up a phase cannon. Why would I ever not tinker up a phase cannon? Yo, for real though, just you gain a stat point, huh? <laughs> that seems pretty all right. Where would you, what, man, what the hell is our splice? Maybe there's more game left than I thought. I don't know. Uh, so the good news is, we gained a bunch of carry capacity because of the stat points that we gained from leveling up. Uh, where at is all my weapons? Let's look at my phase cannon. It's a massive energy cannon is what it is. It's not that massive. It only weighs five pounds. It's actually considerably lighter than the Eigen Rifle. Like a lot lighter than the Eigen Rifle. All right, let me pull this cell. You know what we must do. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna plug the cell into here, high capacity solar cell, check, what, 164012, lovely, what a beautiful thing. Uh, let's go ahead and read these books too, and then, uh, and then we're gonna give our, we're gonna give, we're going to give Mithra the send off he deserves. You know what? I don't know what metamorphic polygel is, we gotta figure that out too, we'll come back to it, let's read these books. Cause I don't think we've read, you know what, Edda and the Earthling, Maybe we have read, but I don't think we've read the other one. Yeah, 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 this is the thing about the mollusks. On humanoid mimicry of animals and plants. I'm fair sure we've never seen this before. Why do some creatures seem to prefer when we assume their likenesses while others hate it? This is in-game text explaining why the scaled trait makes reptiles like you more and stuff. As a zoologist, this question has interested me for some time. To address it, I must first draw a distinction between natural mimicry, where certain humanoids have developed animal and plant likenesses on a biological level, and unnatural mimicry, enacted in the forms of clothing and other decorative adornments. 
As for the former, it appears all creatures exhibit kinship toward humanoids who look like them, in the biological sense. The latter scenario is the interesting one. It's tempting to draw the divide between mammals and non-mammals, but the truth is more complicated than this. It's true that the only creatures who seem to take outright offense at mimicry are mammals, but there are documented cases of mammals accepting the mimic. For example, Forkhorned helms endear their wearers to both antelopes and goat folk. On the contrary, ape fur clothing and puma chitin vests inflame apes and cats, respectively. The important detail here is the context in which the clothing is made. Poachers hunt apes and pumas specifically for their prized fur and chitinous shells, and being reasonably social creatures, both species take offense at the flaunting of these trophies. Birds, on the other hand, seem to know that feather harvesting can be, although isn't always, done without proving fatal for the bird in question, though another hypothesis points to birds' specific appreciation of plumage regardless of context. I'd be inclined to believe it has more to do with, the, uh, with that one. Unshelled reptiles seem to have few qualms with mimicry, perhaps believing the mimics to be truly reptile in part. Mollusks, mollusks, trees, and insects all tend to identify with shell bearers, leaf donners, and firefly symbiotes, respectively. Without exception, however, all creatures seem to detest the practice of wearing the severed faces of their kin. Curious. Yes, how very strange. <laughs> good book. That's just good booking. Alright, uh, then... I am curious about this polygel. Hold on a second. <coughs> a pink liquid gel eerily needs the side of a glass tube. It hungers for freedom, and it has an apply option. So you can just apply it to an object. Okay. Metamorphic polygel. So it's going to transform the object, or it's going to... My guess is either transform the object or copy the object. Or, I suppose, it might be the case that it consumes the object. When we picked it up, I assumed it was going to be a crafting ingredient that we would need at some point, And that has not happened. But we're going to just... Yeah, we're just going to point it at something. I'm going to point it at my sphere of negative weight, and we'll just see what happens. Okay. Yep, it morphs into another small sphere of negative weight. That's pretty cool. Man. First of all, sphere of negative weight. Useful thing. Secondly, did it actually become... Yeah, it like it for real became the thing. So I can disassemble one of them now. Get me some DB7. And then we're going to we're going to finally put that improvement on our uh, on our chess piece. Reinforce. Look at that. It's beautiful. Oh, we should scope this thing. All right, I would need a meta crystal to do that. Well, if only I had more metamorphic polygel. Could, I could have duplicated my face cannon. Yeah, we could be dual-wielding face cannons. Um, is it? I think it's time. I think it's time to do the thing. I think there's very little else for us. And so, having accomplished all of the tasks that fate set before him, having done things that would no doubt assure his pa a place in history, Mithter assembled a big ridiculous face cannon, I'm imagining like that thing that Mega Man or that thing that uh, Iron Man uses in Marvel vs. Capcom 2, right? And wandered off into the Deathlands. I no longer feel ill. That's good. That's a good way for me to feel. So we're just gonna we're just gonna do the thing I just said. We're gonna wander off into the Deathlands, and we will we will fucking see what happens. Is there any challenge that can withstand our might? Uh, this is not. This doesn't look all that deathy. Those are like. Chain gun turrets and stuff? Okay, well. I mean, let's shoot something with the face cannon. The face cannon merely clicks. What? It has a full power cell. Hmm. Did I... Did I craft a busted face cannon? Uh, okay. Well, we know the different cells have different amounts of power in them. Let's... Try, but this is a high-capacity... Solar cell, though. Okay, yeah, I guess a high-capacity solar cell doesn't contain enough juice to discharge a phase cannon one time. <laughs> I missed. All right, listen, it's, it's, it's possible that I should have aimed. I can, I can see why you might say that. Hold on, let me, let me, let me just 
hold on. Uh, so if the high capacity solar cell can't discharge the thing once, the fidget cells definitely won't work. Be this nuclear cell. All right, F it, mark, mark the man, and then, boom! You hit the quillipede for one hundred and sixty-three damage. <laughs> That's pretty all right. I'll take that. Uh, so these, I mean, I don't know. Are we actually in the Deathlands? Who can say? It doesn't seem all that dangerous here. Uh, canned have it all. Cool. What is what is what is canned have it all? I mean, it's right. It's canned food, obviously, but like. What effect does it have if I use it to cook? Random effects. It does, in fact, have it all, it looks like. Well, shit, we're here to go wild. Let's go wild. I shouldn't I shouldn't be walking around without a food buff. Make camp. Cook. Nope, I pressed X, which is not C. It turns out those are two different letters. Uh, let's choose some ingredients. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use some canned have it all. And also... And just some jerky, because I would like health. Alright, let's see what this does. A roasted antenna. And those things. You eat the meal. Whenever you drop below 20% 20 HP, you are cured of the ill... Okay, well. That wasn't exactly a winner. Whatever, it's fine. Uh, so, f so far, the Deathlands seem like not really all that deathy. Hold on, I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to unequip the phase cannon for a moment because it is not necessary for the purpose for which we are using it. We'll just go ahead and slap the solar cell back in the Eigen rifle. If we find something scary, we're going to we'll we'll go back to the to the the good one, the powerful one. Ow. Don't chain gun me. I don't get chain gunned. I chain gun others. What are you thinking? That's just a door. It's just a door sitting in the middle of nowhere. You know, these things happen. Well, what do you think? Do we go downstairs or do we try to go deeper into the Deathlands? Let's let's poke our heads downstairs here. See if there's anything interesting to... I pressed the wrong button. Uh, I zoomed out to the world map. There we go. It remembered what tile we were on. I am in a... Nope, hold on. Uh, unlock. I am in a river of salt water. I mean... This all looks pretty normal. Oh, what the hell is that? Okay, never mind what I was saying about pretty normal. An as an agolzvuv, a truly grotesque creature. The agolzvuv appears to be a massive and unnaturally twisted fly. The enormous forelimb barbs of this flightless terror are hung with bits of flesh from its previous victims, slowly rotting for later consumption. Trivial. Bam. Get get kicked. Uh, I also, I really shot the hell out of that sandstone. That'll show him. 55 XP. Hey, it's not nothing. Okay, so we're seeing some we're seeing some new stuff already. I, let's just go down as fast as we can. That's one of those mechanical loader things, right? A saw hander. Well, I'm not afraid of a saw hander. I'm not afraid of anything. I have no sense of self-preservation. I love where'd it go? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So something uh, I killed it. But also, another thing occurred. Y'all saw- yep, that. That makes me a little- a little combination nervous and excited. Disassemble this combat shotgun. Who would use a combat shotgun? Honestly. It's just a bunch of canned mystery meat. I mean, we gotta go and investigate the source. If it's a chrome pyramid, we have- we have the weapon. Who knows? We might be able to take a chrome pyramid. I mean, I'm absolutely terrified of the prospect, but we have some very good gear, you know? 16 penetration is what that what that can, uh, cannon has on it. Then again, we haven't seen one of the... Oh! Being shot at by Agglefly, right? This is an Agglefly, I think. This is a Glow Moth. Huh. Okay, well... Doesn't seem to be a real enemy. Hmm. I thought we were going to encounter a uh, a chrome pyramid. I thought that's what that distortion field was, but I guess not. Maybe the Deathlands aren't quite as scary as I had been, as I had convinced myself. I will admit that I convinced myself of that fact uh, based on very little evidence. 
they're called the Deathlands, is pretty <laughs> pretty much what it boils down to. Uh, please go away. I am not... Oh, done is click. You know what? That's fine. I got hammers. I will conk him. Yeah. So, I don't know... There is, clearly, something causing an effect. I mean, I guess let's just go down... Is the, is the effect coming from beyond the wall? I wish it would happen again while... Oh. We have, in fact, discovered the Chrome Pyramid. It uh, hit me for a lot. I was at full, right? So it immediately hit us for 150 health. <clears throat> I was going to phase cannon him. Oh no, what am I thinking? Yes, that's what I'm going to do. What I was about to say is I was going to phase cannon him, but he's right adjacent to us. It's not a rocket launcher, man. It's just a big gun. Am I going to die while attempting to equip my cannon? I think I might. Uh, do we need to maybe enact some emergency something? Do I have an emergency something to enact? I'm going to hit the Uber Nostrum and Well, maybe. Uh, so what? It's shooting us with a rocket launcher. What is going to make me resistant to a rocket launcher? Probably nothing. I'm going to hit the Uber Nostrum Injector. A torrent of life. So much life. Please, let it be enough life. I just want to shoot this thing one time. We might kill it. I live, you fool, and you've let me inside of your force field. What were you thinking? Get massively dead. He's not... He, he not dead. I'm don't kill him? How do I look at the whole combat log? Hold on, this is important. We're going to actually figure this out. Uh, key mapping. What the hell is scroll combat log upward? Because I need to, I need to know how much damage I actually did. Uh, it's not going to be a debug thing. It's not going to be a movement thing. Open mess or show message history is Control M. That might work. Yes, cool. I flinched away because the rockets, you know, because the rockets, as you might. Here we go. Uh, you failed to pen- First of all, kick unsuccessful. Secondly, you failed to penetrate the Chrome Pyramid's armor. I, my weapon has 16 penetration. How would you even- Okay. <clears throat> Hold on. We have a- Do we have a scanner? We have, an, we have a structural thing. But did we ever pick up a bio scanner? I guess there's a robot version of that thing, right? We would want the robo scanner. Uh, I have a structural scanning bracelet, a force bracelet, an ontological anchor, which I still don't actually know the use of, a ganglionic teleprojector, which I still don't know the use of. I'm gonna try shooting it again? Maybe the problem was that I didn't, I didn't shoot it with enough heart. Let's really think about all of the things we've been through, all of the people who are relying on us. You know, have your, have your earthbound end boss fight moment here. The people of the Waste believe in you, mister. Do it! You failed to pen- I failed to. The Chrome Pyramid fabricates 20 HE missiles from the substance of their body. Y'all, uh, we might- this- mm, This might be bad. Can you scare- I'm gonna conk it. That's not gonna- there's no way. What am I talking about? We don't want to intimidate it because it has a- it has a force shield around it. We're not gonna be able to penetrate the force shield if we're not adjacent. What is the- what is the- Oops, that's not what I meant to do. I meant to change pages in my inventory, but I was not in my inventory. Our carbide holding, our folding hammer is showing eight penetration, and then we have plus four strength modifier, so considerably less is the answer. Considerably less penetration than our other thing. That said, he is only fine. He's still rated as impossible. He's equipped with strange tubes. I imagine those are the tubes that all the missiles are coming out of. The good news is, he actually doesn't seem to be able to hit us. Uh, 24 DV is a very serious defensive strategy. Hey, do I still have, um... We had a weapon that just had the same... It has the same penetration value, right, as, as whatever your opponent's armor is. Did I get rid of that? Oh, I bet I did. Oh, I bet I did. Sorry, do I just have Usher the second in my... What? 
What? What is this? Oh, right. This is the the thing that makes a spinning slug. I don't really want to spawn a spinning slug because I'm concerned that he'll be easy to shoot and then he'll be near us. And the, the, the enemy will use him as a way to detonate rockets adjacent to me. We could try the bronze, uh, the nanopneumatic jackhammer, maybe? It might do something. I mean, we can use it to open up walls, so... Yeah, I, I definitely got rid of that weapon, because I didn't think... I thought we had the... I thought we had what, what it was going to take to do stuff. Well, the good news is it doesn't seem to be able to kill me. We can try to just keep shooting until we get the crit. Right? Because that'll work. We've had that work in the past. The Chrome Pyramid literally can't, it cannot hit us. I am just too, I'm too dodgy. Oh no, <laughs> the phase cannon merely clicks. I don't know, we could, we could try to, okay, can I just recharge the cell? Um, remove cell, and then, I'm kind of surprised that this is, uh, this battle is going as anticlimactically as it is. I kind of, I assumed that if we ran into something huge and terrifying, either we would kill it or it would kill us. That was, like, the whole idea. I didn't mean to leave my inventory there. That was a lot of, uh, a lot of parts that we had to put into that. Hmm, uh-oh. He has revealed another turret. Well, I guess the good news is the laser turret's more likely to hit the, uh, the triangle. The pyramid, rather, than it is to hit us. But I don't know that we're going to be able to um, to do any damage here. It might be time to flee. I'm going to flee. I, it, I don't believe it's going to harm us. But if we get close to a wall... Oh, that's right. We know where the exit is. And the exits... Or we know where the stairs down are. And they're over this way. So we have to run through this hallway. Which is definitely a very dangerous uh, thing to do. The turret is trying really hard to destroy the thing. So rockets are just whipping past our heads. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to stay close. Let him fire another volley because he's he's reloading right now. And we can let him kind of open up the terrain a little bit. Must you, Agglefly? Okay, it teleports adjacent to you. Flinch away as a flash of light whizzes past. I guess that's probably the laser turret, huh? Hey, what's that in the corner up there? Nothing. It's just a tile that looks weird. Okay. Yeah, that was my concern. As soon as we get near a wall, all of a sudden it has a way of harming us. That said, I didn't realize this before, but it seems like it has to keep a hole in its shields. Okay, I'm just letting him, letting him open up the terrain. I'm trying to move cautiously. We should probably use an injector. Did the eater did the eater's flesh heal us when we used it? I know it. I know it made us uh, full and no longer thirsty. Here, let's apply this. We don't have a lot of those left, so let's be careful. It sure does heal us for a lot, though, huh? Soothing that that familiar soothing tingle sadly has faded. Okay, not a big deal. Him being close to us doesn't actually increase the danger. He's now lightly damaged. I think he's mostly harming himself. This is the really scary part. Those are the stairs down. Alright, I'm going to hit him with the menacing stair. The Chrome Pyramid resists becoming afraid. Who would have thought? Okay, yeah, this is the scary part. We can juke one of the spaces, but Sprint is on cooldown now. We don't really have a lot of tools aside from that. I'm not allowed to charge nothing. I wish I could just charge, like, that bent metal sheet on the ground over there. Right, this is the part that's going to hurt. Yeah. Oh, no, we took too much damage from the explosions. We almost made it to the stairs. So, what we learned about the Chrome Pyramids is that if you have enough dodge that they literally can't hit you, it turns out they're not that dangerous. But, boy, they sure are impossible to murder. How are you supposed to kill a thing that routinely takes zero damage from a 16 penetration weapon? I mean, I guess the, an the answer is you need a vibroblade or a, a gaslight weapon or something. Well, no one ever knew what happened to Mithra. He simply followed the hum out into the Deathlands, and we never heard of him again. Some say 
he's still out there with his massive, ridiculous cannon. And that's that's just how that story is going to end. He passes into myth with the other great heroes of our continuity, like Rat Ear Jim and that goat that I thought was maybe a baby giraffe that one time. And that is where we're going to end the story of this version of the game. We're about half an hour in here, so I'm going to go download the beta branch, and there's going to be another half of an episode, and I'll see you in a second. Alright, here we are. You might notice, things look pretty similar. Uh, it, yeah, it looks pretty, it turns out it's still the same game. <laughs> but we are now on the beta branch, and I figured we should go for a character who's pretty different from the guy that we just built. So not a lot of agility, certainly not a lot of strength, not much of a physical combatant. And if we're going to go mutant, we should try to go for some things we haven't done before. Um, I did take light manipulation again because it's so good, it's so powerful. Listen, I'm not trying to throw all build sense to the wind here. I'm just saying, you know, we got to try some new things out. I still need a crutch, and that crutch is light manipulation. Uh, now, I went for some... I, I, there's a little bit of a theme going on here. I was like, well, what's a, what's a cool way to use light manipulation as a character trait? What kind of guy would, you know, would, would like to be able to produce his own light, aside from, you know, anyone who wants to survive in the dark? Uh, and so, what I've done here is I've created a little bit of a psychic superhero. He is the Mind Vine. You can see we have domination and beguiling. We, we grow up into our opponent's minds and we take control of them. We have telepathy and burgeoning, which allows us to produce lots of plants at a moment's notice, which of course feed off of our light manipulation. And then I made myself amphibious because like we got a whole light and water thing going on. So I thought that would be a good thematically, that would be cool. And then also um, I needed points. So <laughs> amphibious seems like a not that painful way to get some extra build points. It does mean that we are going to consume uh, about 66% more water. But, you know, maybe that won't be a problem. It, it wouldn't have been a problem with the last character, and we're just going to hope that all of Mithter's good luck carries over to our new Mind Vine here. Uh, so, I'm, the game's not going to tell you that we're part plant. I'm going to tell you we're part plant. We're a cool plant mutant guy. That's our deal. Uh, where are we going to start? Well, I have complicated feelings about starting with Harvestry. Like, do we want to be... <laughs> Is it weird if I'm a plant guy to do the thing that, that has me harvest stuff from plants? Maybe we should start in the desert canyons, because that way we get plus reputation with vines. That's pretty That's pretty on flavor. I'm doing it. I'm picking that for that reason. Boy, this seems way less good than the other ones, right? 50 reputation with equines, tortoises, and vines, and wayfaring versus these other... Alright, it's fine. Whatever. This is how we're going to do it. Mindvine is go. What is your name? Well, I think our name is Mindvine, probably. I mean, it's not... This is not the character's birth name, but this is who he became. This is... Is this a dumb concept? I don't know. We're gonna see. This burgeoning thing where we just, like, produce a large number of plants all of a sudden? I have no idea if that's gonna turn out to be good. It's quite an expensive mutation. So, let's hope so. On the 7th of Tishru Iux, you arrive at the village of Birsipad. And then all that stuff about the, you know, that's all the same. So wait, does this mean? Yes, I look like a stilt um, guy. A stilt monk? I look like a guy. Okay, let's have a quick look at our... We have a goat jerky, we have a lot of torches, we have some water. Ooh, painted leather moccasins. What is painted on my moccasins? A scene from the life of the ancient Sultan Oxerad I. Deep in the wilds of Waterver Waterworks aristocracy of Apir, Oxarad stumbled upon a clan of frogs performing a secret ritual. Because of his mirrored eyes, they accepted him into their fold and taught him their secrets. That is the opposite of what I would do if I met someone and they had mirrored eyes. That's terrifying. And I just now learned that information, so I've been wearing these moccasins, but apparently I had not at any point looked at them. Also... We're wearing a wreath, which feels appropriate. I'm going to unequip this torch. I have my own light. I brought my own light. I hope that's okay with everybody. All right, let's just have a, a quick chat with the people of this village. First of all, check out this thing. A sick historic hologram. A scene from the history of the village Birsipad. The villagers of Birsipad laid offerings at the feet of Hectonia Dinthalus, legendary giant dragonfly. 
in exchange for knowledge about the contemplation of naps, which is a thing that a dragonfly would know about, apparently. That doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. I don't think bugs sleep all that much. They don't live long enough for that to make sense. Uh, yes, Wanderer, Orphan of the Salt, listen, I know all about your deal. What waits for me there? Oh, a quest, you say? Well, I accept. I do love to I do love to go visit Shakina. Do you have any uh, work for me? Find Uldra the Sophic or Ukas. Okay, that's that sounds like a thing I could do. Hey, you're a weird color. Might you be one of our people? Indeed. May the earth yield for us this season. Uh, why is there a drowsing urchin here? Also, is there? Well, I did not notice that. Rutshatark just showed up one day and started basking in the sun. Okay, apparently that's the name of the urchin. I do not see this urchin, but I trust that I perceived it somehow. You know, it might be a plant. I just kind of know stuff about plants. That's just how that goes. Do you have any work that needs doing, by the way? Uh, mind what I say, Nomad. There's a charge you could do for me. Just a while ago, I trekked to a Snapjaw fort and saw a, con a concentrated steelbeard gland paste of the Dinthalary Democracy. To help with farm work, I would like to obtain it. I'm willing to reward your service. Really, that will help with your farm. Okay. Listen, I don't know anything about farming. That might that might be a farming thing. That might not be a weird request at all. Oops. All right, here's the village warden. Let's do a good little uh, ritual here. The villagers of Karched do not care for that. Uh, I, do, I do know where a snapjaw for it is, so you can have that information. All right, uh, we need to find... This other person, Ujur. There's the drowsing urchin up to the top right. So we got a weird artifact here. We got some strange chairs. Uh, what is what does Herb Star Apple Jam do? It gives you plus saves versus bleeding. Okay, that's fine. So I do not think it is. Oh, that's a <laughs> that's a dromad right there. I do not think it is reasonable to assume that this character will have anywhere near the same amount of luck that we had on uh, on Mister. Mithter had a very blessed start. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. They changed something here. Okay, there we go. Apparently, the button that used to bring up the menu that let you look at stuff in the shop inventory now tries to purchase everything from the shop, which is not a thing I can do. Plus 20% carry capacity. Wait, we're, we're now on body packs 20% before? Is this better than it used to be? I, I already don't remember. We've been on the beta branch for 8 seconds, and I've forgotten what life was like without it. Uh, this item is engraved with a scene from the life of the ancient Sultan Oxarad II. Near the location of Oxaradgrad, Oxarad II was captured by bandits. She languished in captivity for seven years, eventually escaping to Alarchabal. Fascinating stories. Okay, so we're going to have to learn what artifacts are basically all over again with this character. Uh, we do have access to a musket here, although it's less critical that we get one with a character who has light manipulation, because we can just laser people's faces off. I am looking very much to the lasering. Here we go, Uldra the Suffolk, the village elder. Hey, I'll ask you, why is there a drowsing urchin here? Well, ask him yourself. That's okay, that's actually a very good answer to that question. Fair enough. Do you have any work? Nomad, we've been reading the village annals, and we learned about a nearby location forgotten to our people, a Snapjaw Fort. What mysteries might this place hold? Artifacts? Livestock? An altar to Hectonius Dinthulus? Hectonia Dinthulus? Legendary giant dragonfly? We must know. If you locate it for us, we'll pay you for your services. It is located near 6th Anterior Tur. That's a little concerning. They didn't tell me, like, a distance or a direction. Alright, well, we'll figure it out, I guess. Maybe, or maybe I'll just die. That also might happen. All right, there is a uh, there is a statue over here, and I guess we ought to talk to this drowsing urchin, provided that it's not gonna blow up on me. Oh, hold on, hold on, we can talk to stuff from a distance with telepathy. Except not this, a Stygian SpongeBob. Does it not? Does it not talk? Nope. I pet I pet the thing, and then it talks. But what the hell? Okay, how does my how does my stupid brain powers work? How does my brain work? Can I chat with you? Yes. Okay, I just can't chat with the drowsing urchin because you initiate conversation via physical contact with it. It's a special case, that's why that wasn't working. Hey, why is there a drowsing urchin here? Roots Shark has been here for as long as I remember, basking in the sun. Going about the tedious work of speaking to peers leads to irreverence toward Hectonia Dinthalus' legendary giant dragonfly. 
The tedious work of- okay, well first of all, buddy, let me tell you something. You and I are not peers. Do you have a brain laser? But secondly, message received, I'll leave you alone. Very rude. This statue worked from stone intricately depicts Hectonia Dinthalus, legendary giant dragonfly. Big diaphanous wings bat the air as it drones in place. I assume that that's just like a thing that the like a plaque that the statue has that says that because obviously it's not it's not doing that. All right, you have lots of fun stuff that we cannot afford to interact with. I got to go get some loot. I'll be back. I mean, it's pretty much going to be there's going to be a lot of brain lasering going on here. Uh, we should probably use our beguile though to take on a friend, excuse me, Apple Farmer's daughter. Would you like to be forced to join me by my incredible brain power? Oh, also I have Priscilla ties. Hold on. Yeah, you convinced the apple farmer's daughter to join you through normal means. So wait, how does... Okay. Uh, and I gotta remember, we have domination too. So... We can direct movement and attacks from a distance using our telepathy. So we're going to try to do sort of a, a zoom answer thing here. Stay out of direct combat ourselves. The brain laser, you know, sometimes it'll be recharging and we'll be shouting at our teammates to do stuff. This is the plan. Will it work? I have no idea. All right, let's, um, do we, do I want to beguile someone too? Now, you know, we'll, we'll save the beguile for like a real enemy. So which, which one of these things is which? That's the snapjaw for it. This is the really straightforward one, right? Uh-oh, I'm lost already. Well, looks like things are going to get a little... Oh! Ooh, look at the animations and stuff. Oh, I like that very much! Seeing our first our first real improvements here. So hold on a second, is the Apple Farmer's daughter that I've convinced to join me considered to be average in strength relative to me? So not, like, horribly overmatched here. Alright, let's uh, shoot laser. So... Uh, D1. What is D1? Nope, that's sprinting. The, the D, D makes me sprint. Yep, that is in fact what D's... Okay. Uh, I should... I should probably bind that to something, because we're going to be using it a lot. It's bound to... I don't know what D1 is. Uh, is it... Sorry, is D1 1? Yes, it is. D uh, stands for number. It's an, it's an archaic spelling. Get him, Apple Farmer's daughter. Hey, she did it. Good job. I don't know if the Apple Farmer's daughter is actually a she, because the app, it's like a mythological creature, right? It's, it's a terrifying mythological creature. What am I seeing here? What is happening? A pool of one dram of bloody salt. So the... Hmm. They have some different graphics for this stuff than they used to. I mean, yeah, grab all. So let's loot these corpses. Nope. Dog corpse, not necessary. Is that just a normal two-headed boar up there? Because honestly, a two-headed boar is exactly the kind of thing that I might want to beguile. Uh, does beguile... I can't remember. Does beguile require adjacency? Yes. You select a direction. All right. Well, this might be a good time to test out another one of our powers. I am going to attempt the burgeoning. Let's see what this actually does in practice. Okay, so it does have a maximum range. It's not that far out. Bam! Get burgeoned. Uh-oh. Uh, I yonder brushed the boar. I love the fact that every time I press L, it's going to shout mind vine at me. <laughs> That's delightful. We've made some good decisions. Okay, so it spawns a bunch of different kinds of plants, and they're all friendly to me. Which was my, my main concern was that I didn't know if they were going to be friendly or if they were just going to be a threat to everyone. But yeah, cool, like a seed-spitting vibe that's friendly to us. Seems like a really good thing to be able to spawn whenever we feel like it. A um, lot, of, lot of warping going around. We do have a pair of Yonder Vines involved here. So I'm going to attempt to convince this boar that it wants to be on the team. Beguile. Kabam. No, failure. I am fail to beguile. Uh, let's see here. Your coquetry infuriates the salty, bloody, two-headed boar. That makes sense. I'd be infuriated, too. Uh, bad news. I don't have... No, I do. I totally have Intimidate. I'm going to Intimidate him, then. Aha! That's bad. I Intimidated him right before the other one ran up next to me. Well, we're not really very good at um, close-range combat, 
and my sprint is on cooldown because I accidentally triggered sprint earlier. So, help? Proselytize? Uh, I think this pig's pretty mad at us. That's probably not going to work. Uh, dominate creature. Did that work? I took control of the boar. Okay. Hello, it's me, the boar. Um, I don't have control of my character as long as my control of the boar is active. We have another boar coming at us from the other side. Oh, my domination broke. That's bad. I was thinking we would we would have the boar run over and fight this other boar, and this boar running away would get handled by the plants and stuff. But I think what I need to do now is run away for my life. For my life if I want to live. Uh, the vine is doing fine work. But I don't really want to leave the screen. God, Intimidate has such a long cooldown. If you don't have a fancy hat, it's really... It's really quite difficult to use. Alright. We're gonna... Oh, hey, that's a new animation. Oh, I don't like it here. This is very bad. Apple Farmer's Daughter, help! Please? Please help. Um, okay. Uh, direct to attack this. Please help. Stop running. Why are you running? I need you to do a thing. Oh, God. There's snap jaws and stuff up there. I really do like the new animations. It doesn't, like, it's, it, maybe it doesn't seem like a big deal. Six turns on sprint. Okay, my plan right now is to just run off the top of the screen at maximum speed and hope to have gotten enough distance between me and my enemies that they don't all get to follow us onto the next, the next thing. Oh, hey, I regained my bearings. This is horrifying. I don't have a thing, so the baboons are, yeah, they're, they're mad. Okay, we're going to go back down and this way. I mean, I, we're probably safe from the guys on that screen, is my guess. I don't think they're going to have the wherewithal to follow us the distance that they would have to. Also, I love having a long-range weapon with 100% perfect accuracy. Beautiful thing. Oh, Tortoise did in fact pursue... Uh, well... Oh, lots of stuff pursued. Maybe enemies are better at pursuing us now in the new thing? Because that's that would be a bad time. But it seems like it might be the case. Uh, I don't think there's anything worth looting here. I'm just going to keep breaking... Oh. Do we want to be on this screen? I don't know. This is not ideal. Oh, hey, it's a sightless guy. That's also bad. He's going to sunder my whole mind. It's going to come right out the back of my head. All right, we're going to change screens back down there. Oh, right, the Snapjaws will fight the turtles. All right, let's go south, because I don't want to deal with that warlord over to the west. And the apple farmer's daughter is just going to have to just gonna have to tough this one out a little bit, I think. How many laser charges do I have available right now, actually? Two, and I do have Intimidate. All right, let's, let's go this way. I'm going to shoot that guy, then we're going to hit the Intimidate, and God, I hope it works. G. G for get out of here. Okay. Yeah, I really like the, the animations and stuff is making, it's, it's so much clearer when um, attacks are getting blocked and stuff. This is really nice. So apparently she has Cleave. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna try to help with this because it would be really cool if we could. Uh, I have no, have no charges remaining. Well, then let's get down here. Cause like if we could, um, if we could go back to the world map, that'd be super helpful. Solid blast. Uh, you know what? I still have some carry weight. Let's just take this. Am I allowed to go to the world map? Oh, okay. Let's do that. We do still have to approach a snapjaw fort, so it's not like this is gonna be trivial, but. We can come in here from a slightly different angle and with all of our laser charges available. I like the new loading animations, too. Okay, uh, I am wearing bad armor. This bark armor is slightly better. It is probably broadly the case, now that we understand a little bit more about like the mechanics and everything, it is probably broadly the case that armor is better than dodge, unless you can produce an amount of dodge. Like, if you can get in the neighborhood of what we had with Mithter, where... It was hard for enemies to be able to hit attack rolls against us under almost any circumstances. That's pretty good. That's a thing worth doing. 
Well, I'm going to just go ahead and, uh, and make use of this fire here. We just ate a Dawn Glider's face. Where would we even get the face of a Dawn Glider? That's not even an easy thing to come across. Ringmail, hey. I'll take that. Uh, and then I have an empty hand. We may as well, like, here, let's steal Vine Reaper in one hand, Iron Short Sword in the other. Not that we're any good at fighting in melee, but... May as well be as ready for it as we can be. Uh, steel Kukri, yeah, that's a fine thing to have. Can I shoot? I can shoot over these fences, right? Yeah. Take that, snap jaws. Okay, well, I guess I guess we have to go in via the door. Hey, remember the early part of Caves of Cud where everything is scary? Oh, look. The... Oh, it's a salt hopper. But the special chest is right here. So is that is that salt hopper not hostile to that um that dude? Well, we found the thing. Sorry, what exactly is it? Yes, I know I found it. I'm trying to look at it. Mist damp tissues were ground in a mortar, simmered in brine. It's just still beard gland paste. Okay, well. I thought maybe it would be different, because it's it's a still beard gland paste of this democracy, and that's not, that Salthopper is just, like, full speed sprinting toward me. I don't care for that. He's going to rend me with his mandible. I hate... I hate being rent. Being rent horribly asunder. Uh, glow white. Bad. Can we leave? Nope. Hostel's nearby. I think probably that Salthopper still counts as a hostel who is nearby, as long as we're near the screen border. Okay. Bad news. Running out of running out of lays in a real hurry here, uh, and the glow white's gonna be a problem, right? Yeah, glow white's a bad time. Really thought we were gonna be able to kill that leech. Um, <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna try to beguile it. It's most of the way to dead. On a, oh my god, multiple glow whites. Oh, that's very bad. The place that we're in now is horrible. I hate it. Uh, beguiled creature. Okay. More enemies. The bloated leech ogles you lovingly. I did not... I, I do not support this behavior. It's a whole tribe of glow... of, of glow whites. Uh, bloated leech is murdered. Yep, that's gonna happen. Oh, they're fast. Oh, they're so fast. Okay. So we need to go back onto the, the other screen. Oh, Apple Farmer's Daughter. Dead. But we have to do it far away from the salt hopper, right? <laughs> Okay, now I light blast you. No, don't shoot that guy. Shoot this guy. There we go. I'll take all of your stuff, and then I will run away. Oh god, the, the glow whites. Oh god. Go back to the map. Ha ha ha! Escape. Oh sweet Christ. <laughs> this is already very difficult. Well, uh, did they... Here we go. So we got a we got an attribute point, we got some mutation points. I mean, I'm inclined to just take ego, right? I do love better light manipulation. Yeah, let's just work on our ego for the moment. And then what do we want to do with these skill points? Like what did we actually start with? We started with tactful. Tactful's a good thing to have right at the beginning of the game. That is nice. Uh, we have intimidate. We could pick up menacing stare as well for a hundred skill points. And then be close to berate, which is actually fairly powerful. Uh, we started with make camp, of course. Everybody starts with make camp. Uh, we don't have any weapon skills whatsoever. I am inclined to take persuasion, because I think menacing stare is going to be really useful to us. And then we don't have enough skill points for anything else. Okay. Well, we're leveling up a little bit. Oh, good. I'm lost. Well, we must be relatively cautious. We're not good at finding our bearings with this character. That's a goat, folk. I'm transferring screens. Oh god, it's us. It's definitely after us. Uh, sprint. More goat folk. Okay, we're just gonna do one of these. Transfer screens. Oh god. Oh god, the goat folk. This is a bad time for that, for them to be extant. Naftali, I am less concerned about. Uh, hey buddy, have you heard of the Mind Vine? Uh oh. The Naftali Forager was unconvinced by my, by my pleas and also lured a goat folk sower into, uh, into combat. Intimidate. Okay, that worked. Ice Frog! 
Oh, I hate it here. This is my least favorite jungle. Uh, we must run very much. Never stop running. I see more goat folk to the southeast. Must regain bearings, please. Well, okay, this is less scary, at least. The threats on this screen are more the kind of threat we can handle. Why is that green? Because it's slimy trash, obviously. Well, let's, uh, let's shoot this... this guy with our laser as many times as he will stand. And if he survives, then perhaps he is worthy to join us on our quest. I do need to find some people to join us on our quest. Some people who are a little better at, like, everything. Also, oh good, Salt Hopper. Uh, well, I mean, listen, if we could convince the Salt Hopper, if we could talk him into, into working for us, that would be pretty great. I'm very concerned that we're going to die here, though. I'm going to shoot the Snapjaw, because I want there to not be multiple things on top of me. Oof. He went at me, he missed me because he rolled a four. Pretty natural stuff. Beguile. <gasps> it worked! Oh, sweet Salt Hopper. Alright, he is going to make a fantastic buddy. And yeah, I'll take your stuff. We still, at this point in our character's development, we just need things to sell. Ooh, reinforced furs. I'll take that. Who needs a ring mail when you can reinforce some furs? So again, we're seeing... I get, they just changed the graphics for very, very small amounts of liquid, it looks like. But it also... Oh! My Snapjaw Scavenger... Oh no, sorry. Snapjaw Scavenger died, not my dude. Slimy, salt-encrusted Snapjaw Corpse. Why did that... What? Okay. It's fine. Oh, is our is our is our salt hopper like trailing the goo behind him? He stepped in that slime and now he's like leaving a trail. That's interesting. Huh. Okay, well apparently that's a thing now. I I'm assuming that's a beta thing and not like a weird trait of salt hoppers. Two damage. Well, two damage isn't going to work. Yo, know, a salt hopper is like an extremely good friend to have. I'm out of laser charges. But I'm not out of Salt Hopper. But I slipped on the slime. I would love to be able to see what's happening. It seems like this this corpse is actually blocking our vision, I think. Like it, it blocks line of sight around it. Get lasered. You huge nerd. Yeah, it's it's preventing us from seeing past it. What is that the corpse of? It's just a guy, right? Just a snapjaw? Huh. Maybe it was a particularly tall snapjaw? Why would tallness... Do I think he died standing up? Why would I even say a thing like that? Okay. Salt Hopper, you have been a fantastic friend. I'm so happy to have you here. Uh, equip? Oh, no, that's right. I was already wearing moccasins. Well, there's no reason to wear the painted ones, right? We could sell the painted ones. They're slightly more valuable. Alright, don't get yourself killed. Ooh. A painted cloth robe, and we got a copper nugget there. A scene from the life of Oxarad II. While visiting an obscure arena in Lyceum Republic of Alamrapur, Oxarad II met with a group of gladiators and commissioned a hammer that evoked the presence of a traveling map. Ah, uh, I too have seen Dora the Explorer. She named it Mapicus. Who could forget that unstoppable earworm? I'm the Mapicus. I'm the Mapicus. Was that the Snapjaw that just made that noise? Or the, the, sorry, the Salt Hopper, rather? Wow, 16 damage. This thing is actually kind of terrifying. Uh, so we're getting, we're getting up on our weight limit here. We should probably head back to town. I still haven't regained my bearings, have I? Black robes are nice and light. I mean, we're, we're just gonna, we're gonna get real bad trade value per pound. Because our character doesn't know how to trade. And also because we just don't know what's valuable. Oh, hold on. I would rather have this sword than, like, bark armor. I'm going to drop both of the bark armors, actually. Those things are heavy and not valuable. So, yeah, there's, like, a, a tracking slime around system happening, which is interesting. Okay, my bearings. I found them. Okay, let's go back onto the other screen until there are not, in fact, hostiles nearby. Can I... Okay, there we go. So... Uh, we don't really know what is meant by near 6th anterior turret. I'm, I'm just going to go back to town because we have stuff. 
let's do a little bit of trading. Let's turn in the one quest that we did uh, do the thing for. I don't remember which one it was. Ah, it was you. I found your concentrated Stillbeard Gland paste. Drifter, you have our thanks. You've proven yourself a friend to our village. Okay, Recoiler, hooray. And 375 XP. And do we get something else? I mean, reputation, obviously. Of course, he wants us to go to Gritgate and speak to our favorite people in the world. But no, the, ran the random item is uh, a reward from the other quest. Okay, well, I mean, it's cool to have a Recoiler. That's going to make our lives a little bit safer. Let's... Step out and see if we can do this other quest real quick. Oh, no, sorry. The whole reason I came home was to sell stuff, not even to turn in that quest. Yeah, being able to do Beguile Assault Hopper early on feels like a pretty big deal. I think Dude is going to be very helpful indeed. All right. I don't want these robes. Uh, wait, no. Six. No? Plus. Plus is how you do things. Uh, cloth robe, furs, painted cloth robe, this ring mail, certainly don't need any of that. These moccasins are all yours. I do not need torches, broadly speaking. Wait, how do I do all? Ah, oh, whatever, I'll just hold plus for a second. Alright, and then there's a bunch of weapons that I don't particularly feel I need either. Okay, that's 81 drams of value. Also, I picked up some trash at some point. I don't really... Don't really want that trash, but also the merchant doesn't value it. So let's... Uh, we definitely want some water. I don't know that we actually want much else. I suppose it's good to have a gun. We should take one of the muskets. And, with that, probably all of your ammo. And then... A small box. What's a box going to be? Tubes or injectors? I don't know what this is. Give it to me. I must find out. Alright, give me more water as well. I definitely need water. What did I just buy? What's a small... What is this box? It's a box of crayons. I guess that makes sense. It's a box. Well, that means we got ripped off real bad. <laughs> so, unfortunate. Reload the musket. Okay. Oh, you know what? We should also eat... They have a, a free food that does something, so we may as well eat it. Oh, this time we only got plus 11. Ridiculous. Okay, so what exactly does the quest text say? It's just near? Located within a parasang of 6th interior tour. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, that's just a lot of space to explore. How tough is a chameleon relative to us? Not, not that tough. Wow. I lost sight of him because, um, light. I guess I didn't need to do that. I'm just, I'm spending laser charges for no reason. We are being shot at from a number of directions. I'm going to break line of sight here. Salt hopper ran off. I, I think these are arrows, maybe? It's hard to tell. They could be seeds. Uh, looks like they were probably arrows, because that guy has a short bow. That corpse has a short bow on it. Actually, the graphic for seeds and arrows is slightly different. I think we're being, yeah, we're being shot at with seeds now. You can see the projectile graphic is a little rounder. The arrows are just a, uh, are just a straight line. Hey, that was pretty good. Got a sun veil. That'll sell for a little something. So the, um, the, the light manipulation is pretty good for vision, but it's certainly not as effective as proper night vision was. Uh, do we want to carry around leather armor? I guess so. Okay, so really we're mostly just looking for... Hold on, I'm gonna go kill this stationary plant enemy. <laughs> a very easy source of XP. At this point in the game, a really significant amount of XP. Okay. Uh, this looks a little... Th these dogs won't be hostile, right? Yeah, no, never mind. We're cool. Oh, that's a glow white, though. That's a bunch of glow whites. That Snapchat Warlord cracked open and a bunch of glow whites jumped out. Oh, don't want to shoot at my dude. 
we have another glow white. Hey, um, hey, my dude. Could you please attack, uh, yeah, this guy. Look at that. He takes direction very well. I'm assuming that killing a glow white would be worth a lot of XP for us right now. Let's take him back onto this screen. I think it probably will be the case that only one of them will actually come over here with us. Oh boy. Oh, okay. Never mind. The salt hopper handled it without me. He's very good at his job. How are you doing there, pal? You are a little injured. Can I name him? Is that is that a thing I have the option of doing? Yes. Uh Choose a random name from your own culture. Choose a That's so cool. You know what? I was going to come up with a name for him, but I will choose a random name from his culture. What's your name, buddy? He tells us his name is Olyplus. He was named after his father's parrot. But it was a well-liked parrot. The family really appreciated this parrot. Okay, well, I don't want to go back onto that screen. Even though glow whites are worth 250 XP. Um, I don't want to fight any more of them. So we'll just auto-run over to here. I stopped running because there's a Snapjaw Hunter. Ah, there is. Distant to the southwest. Or southeast, rather. Well, let's go check out his belongings. I'll tell you this. Uh, managing to beguile a salt hopper is like, probably the only reason that we are still alive. Oh dear, multiple salt hoppers on this screen. Wait, is that... Chloe? Is that Crow hostile? No, why would it be the first thing I would target then? I'm gonna shoot this vine. Let's get rid of that real fast. And then it's gonna be... Oh, nope, never mind. I was gonna say it's gonna be salt hopper on salt hopper action, but apparently all it plus doesn't feel that he needs to fight this one. Buddy, could you maybe focus up a little bit? And I'm gonna I'm gonna give this thing my most menacing stare. Okay, cool. Let's try to kill him while he desperately attempts to escape from us. Okay, we got him. He's actually worth quite a lot of XP himself. Turns out you level up pretty quickly. It does seem like there are more sounds, doesn't it? Well, I mean, we're gonna have to fight this thing. We may as well... May as well pull it from a safe distance. I'm out of charges already. What's the cooldown on stair? 38. So, okay, we're gonna have to let it get close to us and intimidate it. I don't love that. Uh, just so we're all clear on what you're doing, you are attacking this target, yes? Okay, let's... I'm just worried about the path he's taking. I guess we'll just wait. There's not really a lot for me to do here. There we go. Just waiting for charges to come back. Is that... What is... Oh, that, that dragonfly fought a glow crow to death. Well, our lives would probably get a lot easier if we could regain our bearings. So I don't know exactly where we are relative to... The thing. Oh, that's a kudzu. Just walked right into it. You discover Momoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoomoom
the good news is there's other things nearby that they might get distracted by. Also, baboons, not that tough, it turns out. If you have lasers, you can solve any problem. Especially lasers that come from your brain. I am out of lasers, so a problem-solving ability reduced. I do still have a salt hopper. All right, buddy, you don't have to... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Come over here. Stop fighting everything. Okay, resume fighting everything. I'm going to get leashed so bad here. And I do not have um, any more charges. I need you. I don't know what you're doing right now, but I need you to come back and fight this leech for me, and I'm going to try to kill this little dude. Okay, I was very successful. Try to kill this little dude. It is a lot easier to read multiple creature combat with the little animations. That's super helpful. All right, we got a laze off. Unfortunately, I am out of charges again. That's fine. We'll just we'll just stand and fight. With Ole Plus looking uh, watching over us, we will be okay. So, a painted leather cap. While wandering around library aristocracy of Bipad, Axarad discovered a Kamu Knot. There he'd befriend, befriended flowers and dug into the Earth's strata. Oh, he's like, uh, he's like us. We are also a friend to flowers. I would rather wear this cap than that wreath, even though the wreath is totally in character for us. Uh, and then, yeah, we should probably take this stuff. Okay. Well, there's a road here. That might be significant. Take this. I don't really want the rest of that garbage. Here, I think we can probably just let our uh, let our friend do that work. Yeah, see, we, we want to save up for situations like this, where there's... Oh, there's a legendary. I should probably be careful. Oh, I'm standing on a weird artifact. Well, examine it. Okay, get it, I suppose. Am I out of... I am out of charges. Well, the Snapchat Warlord is badly wounded... I assume our dude should have no problem winning that fight down there. I'm just going to try to kill him with, yeah, with raw, raw physical might. You know, all that might I have. You don't have to be completely defined by your brain laser, is the thing. You can have lots of skills. Kabam. Also, the brain laser's good, though. Don't, don't let me sell that short. So what are we looking at here? We have a guy... Dobulu the Nimble Snapjaw Fire Snarler. A bad time. That's a bad thing for him to be called. Hated by the villagers of Ala Alarava for repeatedly beating them at dice. So we're going to get some villager rep for killing him. It's not necessarily going to be super easy, though. Hold on, let's back up. Back up. I'm going to start a fire. We're going to uh, we're gonna cook a little something here. I'm going to take a moment and just uh, try to have laser charges available. Oh, hey, we're, like, way over the hour. The, here's the thing about this game is it's, uh, fun. All right. Oh, God. What a large number of total enemies. If we can pick off a lot of his followers, especially the ones with the ranged weapons... Why did I do that? I, I saw the path. Um, we can probably control him all right with just um, Intimidate and Menacing Stare. Uh, we could also... Conduct a burgeoning. Kabam. Oh dear. I made uh, something happen. I don't even know what all happened there. So there's a thirst thistle. That'll shoot at him, right? But unfortunately, a lot of these plants are not super helpful, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Luminous Horseshoe's valuable, right? I was thinking of this as like a combat summon thing, but... Oh, wow. Wait, what happened there? He just took a lot of damage. Yeah, he took 24 damage from something. Um, the message log isn't going to help, right? Because it wasn't a message that appeared for us anyway. Yeah. I, I would have to have my logging settings set to more verbose, I think. Oh! Oh, I summoned a lurking bath. Yeah, that's terrifying. Wow, that sucks for him. That's so bad. Okay, that guy got yonder brushed. We got some <laughs> we got some pretty powerful plants out of this, actually. 
I'm assuming that the lurking Beth won't harm me even if I step on it because it's friendly. Oh man. Okay, we're starting to get. I'm. I'm gonna start employ. Oh, I shot my. I shot my rabbit. Okay. Well, it shouldn't happen again because now I'm firing in a, in a different direction. Uh, do I have? I do have a laser charge available. Cause I'm not really that worried about random snapjaw scavengers, right? Like I even I can handle a snapjaw scavenger at this point. Okay, well this was this got a little weird. Which corpse is his corpse is this one, right? So it looks like he didn't really have anything. He did have crocusins, which are stylish, and I will equip them. Uh, and then a steel warhammer is relatively valuable. I don't think a bronze mace is. Then we're going to have to drop some stuff to even be able to move out of here. I mean, it's fine. We definitely have... Yeah, we have some bark armor that we absolutely do not need to be carrying around. So, yeah, the fact that... Uh, the fact that... The burgeoning can summon... Um, can summon Lurking Beth is actually terrifying. Oh, good. A scene from the life of Rashef. While traveling alone through the rust wells, Rashef came across a trove of gleaming stars in a bottle. That's a good thing to know about for later. And a copper nugget. I'll take that. We're doing a terrible job of the quest that we were supposed to be on, but I am having lots of other kinds of fun right now. Okay, you know what? I need to stop now or I'm going to play another full hour of this character's life. I don't know if you guys got this yet, but I enjoy Caves of Cud, and I'm glad that I decided not to, uh, not to call the series... Not to call it a break in the series, anyway. Uh, thank you all so much for watching, and come back next time, tomorrow, for the next issue in the exciting adventures of Mindvine! And we'll see you then.